Hello there, my name is Mrs. Janice. I am the district-wide technology integrator for the Cleveland Hill School District. I am here today to share with you a few tips for using your student's iPad. Now, if you have a child in the elementary school, you have an iPad that probably looks a little bit like this. It would just have a different background picture on it, um, a different eagle, if you will. So, uh, but you notice you have a lot of the same apps on it. And so I'm just gonna kind of walk you through a little bit of uh, some tips, some tricks, some ideas for how to make things run more smoothly with the iPad, okay? So one of them is that if you are struggling with battery life, you first of all want to make sure that you have the correct adapter. This is the correct adapter you should be looking for, something that looks like this. If you have something smaller or if you didn't get one from the school, it's important that you contact the office and ask for one because this kind of adapter has enough power to charge an iPad. If you're trying to charge it with a phone charger um, or a different type of tablet charger, it might not be putting out the same output. So I would strongly recommend ask for one of these. So that would be step one to make sure it's going to hold a charge. The second thing I want to share with you is that you can check about your screen brightness because the screen brightness, if it's up too high, will draw the power faster. So you'd want to be going into here. You would go into settings, look for the area that says display and brightness. And then you can look here to see if the brightness is up very high or if it's down a little bit lower. You also, in the same area, want to look and see what the auto lock is because you don't want the auto lock to be up too high. So for example, in this case, mine is set for 10 minutes. If yours is set for never, that means the screen will never ever go to sleep while the student is using it. So it's important that you would maybe make it down to two, or if that's too low for your child, you'd want to make it five or 10 at the most. I really wouldn't make it more than 10 for kids. So I think I'll change mine down to five, okay? It's also important to keep in mind that you should always keep the iPad plugged in while the student is on their Google Meet or their Zoom call because I've heard it said that a, an iPad or any other device really is going to drop 1% power per minute that you are on a live call. So do make sure that you keep that plugged in while you work. If you still need to use headphones during the call, that's fine. The headphones are actually going to be located, if I turn this sideways, and I'm going to angle it up a little bit here, it will actually be up here. You can see where the hole is. Now on an iPad that has the thicker cover on it, you would see it right up there. You'd have to just move the cover. Okay. You'd also want to check the, uh, let's see, we've got the sleep time, we talked about the brightness and the adapter and keeping it plugged in. So those are kind of the main things if you're having trouble with the battery, I would try those first, okay? Okay, next thing I wanted to share with you. Um, if you are working on um, how to take a screenshot, because sometimes it's just easier to show the teacher what the iPad is doing if there's an error message or if something's not working right. So what I would recommend for that, take a screenshot. And like many other devices similar to phones, the way you're going to do that, you're going to press at the same time the power button, which is actually up here. Power button on these iPads is way up here. And also the home button. All right, so you're going to press them together at the same time. And if your volume's on, you'll hear them make a snapshot sound. Okay, and you'll see that it goes there. Then when I have that taken, let me turn it this way for you. Then you can, from there, edit it if you need to. You can even use the tools at the bottom. Let's see if I can show you this. Okay, there's some tools at the bottom that you can use if you need to circle something or handwrite something. You can edit it that way. Uh, try a few things there. When you're done, you can just use this share icon at the top. And you could use the child's mail account or if they have Gmail on here, you may want to use their Gmail to send the email to the teacher and to show them what's happening. All right. Or if it's something you're attaching to an assignment in Classroom or in Seesaw, you could also do it that way. All right. Because let's say I go and send it to Gmail, it will then send this email, put the picture right in it, and then I can just write the teacher's name up there. All right. When I'm done, I can discard my draft if I don't want it. I can also click Done and tell it I want to delete my screenshot. Okay. So that's how we take a screenshot on the iPad. Now, what if I want to search for something? Let's say there's an app that I need to use and I cannot find it. Easiest way to do that, rather than looking through every folder, is to swipe down anywhere on the screen and it brings up a search bar. 
All right, so I'll show you how I did that. Again, anywhere in the screen between two apps or two folders, anywhere on the screen, just sort of gently swipe down. And then I can just simply type in what it is I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for Spelling City, I can start typing Spelling City and the app will appear right at the top. It'll also tell me which folder it's in in case I want to go there directly next time. Okay, so that's how we're going to get to folders using the um, swipe down function to search. The next thing that we're going to do is take a look at how we can right click on an app or on a program or something because there is sort of a right click feature that you might not have known was there. So for this I'm actually going to open up, let's open up Google Docs. I'm going to sign in. Let's see what I can find here. I'm going to look at the email introduction lessons. All right. So if I wanted to do a right click inside this document, I'm going to do an edit here. I can actually long press or also known as tap and hold. I might have told your kids in school tap and hold. So if you press and hold, you'll see it actually will pop up with a few different options for the kinds of things you might be able to do here. Okay, tap and hold. All right, and new options appear depending on where you go in the page. So it's just a simple long press, press and hold, and you'll see the little bubble pops up like a magnifying glass. Okay? Different, um, different screens might have this option, other ones don't. You can see different things are here. Now while we're here, I want to mention where it says edit home screen. You might notice you're not able to edit the home screen. I can select it, but nothing's going to happen. Normally you'd expect it would wiggle a little bit and allow you to move them. That's not a feature on these, and that's because we set them up so that all the folders and apps look the same for all kids. That's intended to help your kids, that's intended to help the teachers. So as part of doing those folders, it locks you out of making any changes on your own. So that's why that doesn't work. I also wanted to let you know that down here on the, on the dock, okay, this is like your quick access area down here. So you'll see that there are six icons here. We have Seesaw first. The next one is Safari. That's our web browser on the iPad. We have Google Classroom, Gmail, Google Meet, and Zoom. Now, the apps get updated all the time, so if the icons change, that's okay. It's still the same app, it just means that the icon has changed. If you see a dividing line, on the right side of that shows you the last three apps that were used, the most recent three apps. So you can turn that off in the settings if that bothers you, but some people tend to like it because it's quick access to the things that they would use the most. Now, if it seems like the iPad is running a little slowly or if apps aren't working like you want them to, one of the things you might want to do is to quit the apps. And the way you would quit an app on an iPad is to double tap on the home button. Excuse me, double tap like that. Now you can see these are the last four apps that I used. These are all running in the background. So what I would do in this case is once I've double tapped on this home button, I can swipe up just like that. And it makes, me, makes them go away and that quits them from running in the background. Okay, now what if a website isn't loading right? What if you're having trouble with a website, something's going wrong, and you can't seem to figure out what's going on? The next piece you're going to want to do is maybe try clearing the Safari cache. That's a really easy thing to try. So you can actually go to the Settings app, and you're going to go down here to where it says Safari. You can scroll to the bottom, and you'll see advanced because you'll notice here where it says clear history and website data it is currently grayed out and I don't know why that is because normally it wouldn't be grayed out but you can still click advanced then go to website data so I would just click on remove all website data that's going to wipe out whatever it is that might not be going well it also log me out of any sites that I might have been logged into if that's not what you want all right So those are some basic tips that I can offer you to try to make your iPad run a little smoother, a little better. I'm going to come back in a separate video and I'm going to show you at that point how you can use multitasking. Uh, it's a little bit trickier, but it's going to be worth it if you can get it going. So I hope that this helped you. I hope this gets you started on the things that you need to get working with your student's iPad. Uh, thank you for watching.